So today, 90% of enterprise data is sent to the cloud. This number is supposed to drop to just 25%, according to Gartner, in the next couple of years. So where's all the data going? Well, it's not going anywhere. It's being stored and used locally on the device it was created on. And this is called edge computing. Now, this is our very pragmatic definition. Because if you're a little bit in the field, you may be aware there's fog, mist, edge, obviously the cloud. And it feels a little bit like this if you know the movie. We have seen a couple or quite a few of edge consortia coming up in the last years, supported by big companies like Dell, HPE, Deutsche Telekom. Actually, Dell and Huawei, for example, they are like in nearly all of those. So they haven't taken their bet yet. And they all release definitions and want to make this the standard. Um, what I think you can fairly safely say is, um, so for us, basically, edge covers everything that's from mist to fog. Um, generally agreed, I think, is that mist is at the farthest side of the edge and the most small devices you can get. It's typically sensors. They have very limited connectivity, usually, because it's tiny devices and they don't come with Wi-Fi, for example. Um, small hardware, very, very decentralized. You need to find the connection to um, the cloud or internet in any um, way. And obviously, because it's very limited connectivity within that limited space, you get fast response rates or on-device response rate. Um, on the cloud, you all know that. It's centralized, it's huge service, it's lots of hardware. Um, if you as access the cloud from the far farthest edge or from the mobile, it may or may not be kind of slow, right? You, you are dependent on the, la the latency of the network. And that depends on where you are and a lot of things. Fog is very often used in a specific field of the industry and tend, uh, tends to be like fog nodes that distribute to edge nodes that distribute to mist devices. So it's kind of a um, intermediate centralized system, I'd say. So is this all new? Yes, edge computing is very new, we all know. No, we had mainframe computers a long time ago. We shifted to a client-server model, then shifted back to a centralized cloud, and now the next new thing is edge computing. Cloud still is dominant in IoT, as most of you will know. I think there are a couple of reasons for that. That is mainly, um, it's easy. So you have large cloud providers, it's containerized, everything is central, processing happens there, IoT devices stay stupid. That works very, very well um, if you want to set up something fast, prototyping, want to show your use case. Uh, especially for um, many developers, it's easy because you don't need to care about scalability, redundancy, it's all solved, it's managed. Um, you have one consistent state. That's very important. If you have edge devices, you need to pay, think about synchronization. And this is typically where the, where the hard stuff starts. People don't want to deal with it. Another reason why you would go to the cloud. And then, and this is an important one, you implement logic just once, and then you access it from an interface. That may be an option to keep costs down, sometimes maybe not, but it's easy as a first step. So why do we want to shift now? I think the main driver is the underlying mega trend, basically. Cheaper hardware, smaller hardware, and with it, exploding data volumes. This brings new use cases, and new use cases mean new requirements. And I'd like to just quickly walk you through before I come to use cases, which are mainly from the IoT industry, because I thought that would be the right target group, but I'm happy to talk about mobile too. This is basically where we, are, where we come from and where we're strong. Offline functionality. So 
think about it. Whenever you are mobile, you will be offline at some point, and that's just a given. Um, if you like your app on a mobile device, or maybe in a smart car, to still be working, you need offline capability. Basically, I think offline capable means it feels much more like always on than when it's always on. Um, yeah, just a quick example for the right mindset. If you are taking a flight to the US, you have a lot of time. You really want to maybe be able to access your emails, write emails, send, put them in the um, folder to be sent out, or play a mobile game just as an example. But also when you drive a smart car, you wouldn't want it not to be working in the tunnel. Data security. That, I think, has become a more dominant uh, problem in the last um, yeah, year or two. Um, and there's edge computing enables data com security and data ownership in a very specific way. So when you keep the data where it's produced and used locally, it's less susceptible to being attacked. Usually hackers want to go for a central instance where they have millions of data and not one, the data of one specific person. So that's, that's one reason. And the other reason is it's very interceptable when it's being transferred. If it's never being transferred, it's more difficult. And data ownership, well, if the data stays with you, you're the owner. You don't need to worry who does what with your data. It's pretty easy. Yeah, on your mobile device or if you have a um, IoT health device, you might really want that. Need for speed. So I think you all know that whenever your computer or your mobile device is slow, it can be frustrating. Uh, the tolerance goes down because people are expecting it works well. If something is slow, people often don't care why it is slow. So it may be because of the network latency, but user, end users don't care. So that's one reason. But that's basically nice to have. There are applications that are security relevant, if it's in health or security applications in the IoT space, um, or again in the car, that you really need speed. You want the application to be responding in real time, basically. Cloud costs. Cloud costs are a funny one because, uh, generally speaking, people tend to not think it's such a huge issue, but it very well can be, especially when you use high-fidelity data. Transferring everything to the cloud, which may or may not be used there, gets super expensive. People have a couple of hundred thousand euros cloud costs per month easily, and it ruins their business case. So then they need a sol solution. And the bandwidth cap is just something you need to deal with. Um, bandwidth is limited with growing data volumes. Some cities even, you know, like there's a hard cap on it. Um, you can't send everything over or it will be very slow. So it's just a matter of reality. And then people tend to be like, okay, but 5G is coming. Yes, it's coming. It won't be, it's not here yet. And um, the rollout will take time. And then again, you will always have areas where you are offline or don't have that kind of connectivity. So a couple of use cases to maybe make that a little bit more pragmatic. Smart cities. So in smart cities, you have buildings, traffic, all kinds of utilities, which means you have a large number of different small and medium devices that all produce data all the time. You generally want to use that Locally, you face broadband limitations because everyone wants to be online all the time. And obviously, you always have areas where you don't have the connectivity. So this is a very good case where you really want to enable, where you really want to use the edge. Apart from that, always the user experience is better if you have faster response times. So one case, an elevator. So we, that's actually something that's working already in very many um, hotels and bigger settings. So they have smart eleva elevators, which means they track all kinds of sensor data and they um, camera, microphone, temperature, etc., for predictive maintenance reasons. Now, those are at least 1,200 data points per second, and it's growing. If you send all of that to the cloud, 
it's super, super, super expensive. So basically, this already is a big device. You're not very constrained in an elevator, right? So you can do a lot of processing here, like the digital signaling processing, audio analytics. You can do all of that in the elevator and then only sync to the cloud what you really want there. You might even think about if um, it's a local management, locally alerting, having a security alert, depending on the setup. Um, and you just save tons of data if you shift that to the cloud. And actually it's happening mainly due to cloud costs. But that's also like if you think efficiency and speed, it makes a ton of sense. Another setting where um, edge computing is very relevant, I've mentioned the car, is obviously in mobility. So railways are an interesting one. Oh, and I think I didn't bring it. Oh, never mind, I can talk about it. Um, V2V, V2I, V2X, I hate acronyms. Uh, it's basically a communication between the car, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, and vehicle to everything. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, typically, yes, quicker response rates, again, user experience, always nice, but those are the cases where you really want real time because it's a matter of security and saving lives. No discussion there. Also, everything that's mobile, offline at some point, and this very, very usually off, um, uses high fidelity data, so you have lots of data, which makes it again expensive and difficult. So this is a case I actually think is something where you never think you would do edge computing, at least I didn't think of edge computing for that. Um, so the car comes, it wants to be charged, um, they have some latency requirements. They are not too high, so that's fine, basically. And they exchange some data, like, is he allowed to fill up? What's the booking schedule, etc. Things like this. Mm, that's okay. It creates one to 2K data points per second that's sent to the cloud. Um, and usually you can work with buffering in a city. In France, those things, I don't know why, <laughs> stand all over the place in the country. And sometimes they don't have connectivity for three days. Now, that becomes a problem. Buffering is not enough. So you basically need to do edge computing. You need to do it locally. And the device is big enough to do it. It's no worries. Um, I don't know why, uh, I think basically if it's so easy to do, why not shift everywhere? But it's again a matter of implementation and synchronization is where it always gets difficult. But if you want to use these kinds of devices where you don't have the best connectivity all the time or you're unsure if you will have it, you basically should do edge computing because it's a huge bummer if someone wants to fill up his car and can't or does even though he shouldn't be allowed, so you would be losing money. Typical edge case. And yeah, I'm going to talk about the railway later because I didn't bring it, but we have a very interesting um, railway case at the moment too. Tolling. So in tolling, usually you have this tolling station and a car passes through. So obviously it's a moving object. You typically have the license plate or the RFID tag, which um, is recognized. And then this needs to go to this tolling station agencies where there's a, a red list and a green list and some transaction data. That's highly simplified, obviously. So it looks up is this car allowed to pass? Has he paid? If it is, the response isn't fast enough, like if either this data isn't in sync with those data points or the lookup is too slow, the tolling provider loses money and the customer has a bad experience because in some cases they have some auditor feedback and um, the driver doesn't get the feedback, but he gets a bill later, and then they get all these discussions. Oh, it's, yeah, people don't like it, and it's very unsatisfying for everyone. So basically, at the moment, in some tolling systems, they lose money every day because they don't do it on site. They don't do edge computing. And they are obviously considering shifting more to the edge because you need to be fast and... Um, yeah, you basically just need to be fast. And 
putting everything, you know, trans doing a round trip with your data always will be much slower. Smart home, that's very self-explanatory for me. The biggest reason, two biggest reasons. Again, depending on what all your smart home solves for you. Um, sometimes you may have experienced you don't have internet at home because it's just down for a couple of hours. It's not that often, but it happens. Um, if you're then not, open, not able to open your door, that would be a bummer. Hopefully you have your keys. Um, so it's nice if it functions offline, right? Also for security reasons, maybe. Uh, and the other thing really is, do you want all your data in the cloud for no reason? So whatever, you know, like footage of your security camera, maybe what you weigh, <laughs> whatever. You, I don't think you need that. And um, it makes sense to keep that within your home. Data ownership is clear. Data is much more secure. Last and not least, Industry 4.0, um, smart factories. Very often, smart factories don't have, a, have connectivity. Yeah? It depends, but many shop floors don't, or they have bad connectivity or expensive connectivity. Then there are kind of still a lot of companies who want to manage everything on premise for security reasons. So it's a very typical edge case. Now, we've been just been talking to someone and what they do and where it's interest, interesting to do a lot of um, edge computing is basically they have lines on the factory floor and they have um, cameras and they, with machine learning, they do predictive maintenance. So they basically want to um, take care of the line before it breaks, right? They have, I think, 10 cameras per line. That's a lot of data. It creates tons of data per second. Um, sending all this to the cloud. And they have um, factory floors in 40 locations around the world. And you don't have connectivity everywhere or it's very, very expensive. So basically putting all of that in the cloud is just no option. So they move it to the edge, do some actually already uh, machine learning even in the edge as well do all the pre-processing and the predictive maintenance. So the inline manager gets all you know, the information. And then some of the data, the most valuable quality data is sent to the cloud to train the models and for the central dashboard. That's actually something the CEO really wanted because he said, I have no clue. I have no central KPI over my 40 locations in the world, and I really want to have that. So this is um, sent to the cloud and is being kept centrally, whereas everything else can happen locally, and it makes a ton of sense. So is the edge eating the cloud? No, obviously not. They love each other. Um, and this is basically how it usually um, will look like. It will be a combination. I can very well imagine the smartphone being the new server. It's very powerful. You can do a lot on the edge already. Ah, I have one last question. So, when you do everything in the cloud, and for example in mobile apps and any applications, what happens when you are waiting for the cloud? Well, nothing. And that's a shame. If you think about a trillion devices around the world all doing nothing with a lot of computing power, it's just really, really wasteful. And if you think that one step further, it comes down to huge data centers um, with a lot of power, a lot of technology, a lot of waste, with a lot of data that's never used often on top, yeah, which makes it even worse, and, uh, and, on ton it, and, and on top, it's, you know, you know, costing a lot of money for everyone. So this is another reason why you should consider going to the edge. I'm open for questions now. Sharing is caring. Um, if you have an edge case to share, I'd be happy to learn about it. All right. I told
totally agree that you will have a lot of scenarios, but at the end what it means uh, nowadays most of our of our business is transaction oriented. It means you have to involve data of different clouds. Yeah. Uh, and, and does it mean at the end to speed up the approval process on a small device that we do it now in a different way or in another way that we have to copy as a part of the whole world to the small device in the, in the future? You know, it all depends on the case. There's like, I really thought about this because I always thought like most I come more from mobile, so that's more my background, but um, most mobile apps should be offline. But then you think of a parking app and it doesn't make sense. It's just like a parking app, no, probably it should always run in the cloud. You have too many data points that need to be got, gotten from the real locations and this can only happen at that point in time, so no. And maybe that's a case where you also say like, it doesn't make sense for a variety of reasons. So there's always a balance, it doesn't make sense in every case. I brought cases where it makes sense, um, but there will always be some cases where it doesn't make sense. So I totally agree, yeah, sure. Okay, it's thank you. It's not the answer to everything. Any more questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, from an um, engineering standpoint, that makes a lot of problems, of course, but it has a lot of nice features as well. We have more computing power, we have more small things that can uh, work independently. Um, but what I'm a little bit interested in is, um, so Brewer's th theorem can't be denied. Um, it's just a fact of distributed systems. And, um, or CAP theorem, I don't know if... Ah, yes, okay, yes, yes. So theorem. Brewer's theorem or CAP theorem. Can't be denied. So, how can you solve something like that, um, especially if you talk about security and um, safety and stuff like that, uh, in an edge case? How how can you, how what technologies are there to um, ensure things like yeah partition tolerance? We have we have to have. So, what things are there to ensure what like availability? Do, sorry, what do we have? Uh, partition tolerance we need to have, of course, yeah, because we are on the edge, and that's the whole point of being on the edge that we are partition tolerant. So how can we stay at least somewhat, um, somewhat available all the time or somewhat um, consistent around the system? Inconsistent? Consistent around consistent. the system, yes. You mean like uh, synchronizing data? Yes. Consistent with all the devices along the line? Is That's that what you're pretty referring much about, to? Yeah, or, uh, or we have to... Abol uh, have to um, yeah, drop the partition tolerance. One of the three we have to drop, of course. So, basically, uh, if it's about synchronization, as I understand mm -hmm. it now, um, that's, I think, one of the reasons why so many people refrain from it. It's difficult to do, right? You need to take care of it. But it's nothing you cannot solve. Um, okay, so, perhaps I'm... Yeah. So I come from a distributed systems standpoint here. Yeah? Yes. So a um, classical um, academic distributed systems standpoint. And if we take Brewer Serim Capvim for a fact, yeah, then we have to, to, to think about what other thing do we um, sacrifice. What, what we cannot have, um, always availability, always, um, um, always consistency, and always partition tolerance. That's not possible. So what, how can we solve this, this dilemma in an edge case, in a foggy case? I don't think I get your question. Okay. Because like, I think it's a, it's a matter of, um, <laughs> you, you wouldn't be consistent across devices all the time, right? Yes. It's, it's like not in real time at least, okay. in real, real time. Maybe near real time, but then you always depend on the connectivity. So you need always to make choices depending on the case how to resolve conflicts. Yes. But that will always depend on the individual case. So there may be something where last in is fine. Okay. But there may be many cases where you need a different conflict resolution strategy. So you, your suggestion on a very narrow focused solution strategy, so from use case, from device to device, individual? Yeah. Basically what I think and what we also do is 
um, a generic synchronization that takes care of a lot of the hard parts, like, you know, the connection breaks, um, who, uh, was it still, you know, where is the, is the um, information still safe? Do you need to transfer it again? What do you do with when it breaks in the middle? Stuff like this, all of this. It's not, not, not easy, right? Yeah, of course. So, but solving this is a good base work. But then you cannot decide for an application developer which, in a case of conflict, which information should be committed. This always depends on the case. It, it, you know, some people working on the same data set, you might want to go back to a front end and say, which data should we commit? But this is often not possible in other cases. Mm -hmm. okay. I would have a follow-up question, but I don't but, want to But you see what yes, I'm yes, saying? I think you cannot have, this is not one solution. Yes. Any more questions? Yes. Um, yeah, we heard a lot about uh, the problems edge computing has, but where is the solution uh, Object Box has to offer? Oh, well, we are just, uh, we're just, <laughs> um, we have an edge database and a synchronization solution. So that's what we do, um, which means it can sit on it's designed to run very efficiently on small devices, mobile phones, IoT gateways. It's smaller than one megabyte. It's 10 times faster than any alternative as far as we know. And all our benchmarks are open source. And if you want to go to the sensor, we have a client that's only a couple of kilobytes. And obviously, it can run on the server in the cloud. So it's basically end to end from any POSIX system. And the synchronization, as I already just explained a bit, is very, it's generic. It's for application developers, basically. Thanks for your talk. Uh, just uh, as we have plenty of time, um, you, you wanted to say something about the railways case. So oh, yes. <laughs> um, so we have a, um, so basically railways, I wasn't aware that they, um, I always would have thought they were much more digitalized already, but they, they, they aren't. And um, so what's currently happening is they need mission critical networks. So they are rolling out, depending on who and where and what, obviously, um, edge devices. It's like servers, but yeah, it's on the edge. Um, that basically work over this GSMR railway network. So it's, um, and from there, they gather all kinds of sensor data for predictive main maintenance. And they also um, open that API to app developers so that you can use that data within apps. And obviously they want to use it within the, for the maintenance staff and the people on the train so they can react more swiftly to changes and um, it also communicates with trains that are passing by. So basically, you pretty much have real-time information of what's going on on the tracks, in the tunnel, and, and in the railways. And using that information, you basically um, optimize operational efficiency mainly. It's predictive maintenance, so you reduce downtimes, and passenger security. That's the main drivers. It's, uh, it's not rolled out. It's like a better phase, so they're trying it out in some tracks, the project I'm talking about, and also not in Germany and France. Okay, there are no more questions. Uh, thank you again, Vivian, for this great talk. Um, I have a little of a present for you and... Oh, thank you. Thank you.